and I'm gonna take your interview questions, what you think are the toughest interview questions. So get in the chat, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. If you're in one of my programs, let me know that using your hashtag, put some question marks in front of your questions so Kara can collect them. Denisha, my, my lovely boot camper Denisha had asked a question. Uh, if you could change anything about the job description, what would it be? Okay, now, uh, all right, so the, quest, the tough question is, if you can change anything about the job description, what would it be? Now, obviously, I don't know what job description she's looking at or you'd be looking at, but one thing that I can definitely tell you, even if the job description was written well, meaning you are responsible for this, this, and this. Uh, we like qualifications that are this, this, and this, and all that good stuff. One thing that I would absolutely uh, say that I could say consistently would be, I would love to see in the job description what your expectations of success would be in the first year. Literally, there should be a section in every job description, this is the Andy way of writing job descriptions, where it says success in the first year would look like you will have accomplished this, 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 and this, or whatever it is. Because I believe that it's really important that for you to make a good decision about whether I'd be a great fit, it would be great for me to articulate how I would accomplish the things you truly uh, want accomplished. The other thing it would do for me it was it, it would make me clear on what your expectations are, as well as right give you information to determine whether I could meet those expectations, and it would give both of us clarity, right, on where we're going, the direction, and 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 how we're going to get there. So I would go with something like that. I wouldn't start cherry picking skills or functions or responsibilities or things of that nature. And I'm wondering if that might have been the, 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 the vein in which the question was asked. So, uh, so anyway, I, I, Denisha, I hope that one helps you. And this one, I was coaching somebody last night, uh, and it was, it, or it was yesterday morning, and he um, is a, in Germany, and he is a legal researcher, among other things, gone to law school, has done a lot of things. And, and he was telling me about the questions he gets asked either on the applications or, or in the interviewing process. And one I thought was really great was, uh, okay, here's the question. What are you most proud of in your non-work life? Or in his case, it was your non-work or non-academic life. And what I would tell any of you that get faced with this question is you have to remember, what did I just get done telling you in the package? Every single time you get asked a question, you need to be thinking, what sells me here, right? Now, most of you are going to panic and try to think of something that you're proud of and you're just going to blurt it out. Well, what I told him was, I said, okay, hang on, Timo. If what specifically is the employer looking for as far as traits and capabilities for what they're going to hire you for as a researcher? You need to be disciplined. You need to be organized. You need to be so on and so forth, right? You got you list those skills out. So you're going to give an example that aligns to that. And then what? You are going to explicitly say why you were proud of that. I'm really proud that I was able to attain a second degree black belt because it really it really helps me with my discipline. It really helps me with my organization, my approach to accomplishing. Uh, each time I practice, I get immediate feedback, can make adjustments, and all of these things are the way I like to live my life. Blah, 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 right? What does that sound like? I'm ideal for the position, right? There needs to be a connection every single time you open your mouth to how do I, in some way, shape, or form, sell me, my experience, my skills to what it is they want, the gap that they want. Their gap is I need a legal researcher who is this way, operates this way, thinks this way. So that's what you always want to do. So when people say, well, what about when I get asked about my non, my, my non work, my personal life? It all goes back to your professional life, right? Okay, hope you enjoyed that one.
All right, got a uh, got a little shout out here to Chris Blakesley. Accepted a career growing offer. Your excellent advice and encouragement made such a difference in my optimism and strategy. I, you know what? I can just hold this up. What do you love? What do you love? I love it, Chris. Great, great to great to hear. Huge congratulations. Can we give Chris a high ten in in office hours in office hours cheer? So great, so great. All right, what do we got here? What's next? Next question, Monique. Tell uh, number Monique. Question number one. Tell me about a time when you were criticized for poor job performance. Okay, so now every single time that you have a mistake, a failure. A whatever, okay, all the employer is looking for is not that you made a mistake, okay? That's all cool. Everybody makes them. I make them every day. I make loads of them. We are professional failures, one after another, meaning we fail so we can get better. We fail so we can learn, right? We, we have lots of short-term failures because we're working toward long-term aspirations. All right, anytime you get something like this, your mindset is, okay, yes, there was this time where I, I was working on this project and I was, um, you know, I, 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 I was trying to work on this, that, and the other thing. I didn't quite meet those expectations, but it turned out to be the greatest thing that ever happened because even though, even though I didn't perform as well as I could have at that time, I learned boom, 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 and I was able in the next go round to actually implement those things because it gave me a number of areas that were very clear for me to work on, which I love. I love being able to understand what areas I need to work on, and that feedback to me is vital. I need it continuously, and, and I need it in more formally, maybe in a, in a, in a semi-periodic basis, and I was able to channel that into. Okay, all they're looking for is you you love to get the feedback you are you are taking it and 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 putting it into practice and action and ultimately growth you're learning so you always want to go you always want to go after it that way on any any time you got criticized for per performance i expect to get feedback like this on my performance as i grow because i'm continually challenging myself so on and so forth okay next question what did you dislike most about your most recent boss? Okay, so in this in this case, um, I don't love these particular negative questions. And uh, what I always do is I always try to, to say something that is positive, meaning I'm not talking about fluff answer. The, the only thing I would have loved my boss to do differently don't use the word dislike, even though they use the word dislike, is I would have loved to see Andy more. I would have loved to talk to Andy a little bit more. Uh, and so I, I, I just the absence of time or something like that. So neutral. I, you didn't say one bad thing about me, right? Kind of thing. And that's the, that's the important thing is that you don't go to a negative thing. Well, Andy's such a micromanager. Andy would call me too much. Andy would Andy would be all over me and he would be constantly berating me and this and that. Don't say anything like that. Even if it's true, who cares? All I care about is what? You selling you. My way, you sell you sell you and you get done with that question and you move on to the next one. Monique, great questions. Mohit. Been in an inner tough question from Mohit. Been in an interview where I got asked, what does leadership mean to you? How do I answer that in a way that shows my leadership style as well as impact? Okay, when it comes to leadership, my philosophy in leading, there are a couple of different areas when it comes to leadership that I think are important in order for you to get my style. The first one is philosophically, my view of leadership is leaders build more leaders, they don't build more followers. So in order to do that, you need to figure out if you're going to build more leaders, you need to figure out what each individual 
responds to and what registers with them when you when it comes to communication because some person uh, might need a little more attention some person might need a little bit more of a pat on the back some person might need a kick in the butt and you need to basically tailor your communication style based on that person's feedback language right going back to my love languages analogy that's because you're looking at the individuals themselves then, then there's the actual goal of the team if you want to look at leadership collectively, right? So you've got a number of people working toward a common goal. The goal of a leader when in managing a team is to make sure that the sum is greater than the right individual parts. And in order to do that, you need to recognize that not only are you managing a team, but you're, you're really actually managing individuals to understand how to operate as a team. That means you, a leader would provide them the right structure, but also give them and, and communicate with them individually so that they understand how to actually respond to, how they're actually contributing, communicate to them so that they understand what the common goal is, how they fit in, the communication element of making sure that everybody knows their piece on the team and so on is another great element. And the other thing is, the final thing I would say about leadership is that Whenever something goes wrong, the first thing a leader does is the leader looks at themselves and asks the questions, did I provide the clear inf information and instruction? Um, was, you know, what, what is it like to operate in the environment they're operating in right now as opposed to the one I operated in when I learned that? Am I actually expecting a beginner to perform like an intermediate or an expert, right? And so what a leader does is a leader first looks at themselves and then looks to see if anything is broken with the individual. And so so Mohit, I would I would basically and any of you, every time you get asked about a style or a whatever, you want to, and I mind you, if I had more time to think about that, I could have packaged you up, you know, kind of something that was outlined pretty perfectly but like did you see the way i went boom 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 one two three you're covering kind of major most common areas that people want you to touch on when they think of leadership so so that's what you want to do and in any question what's your management style what's your whatever communication style what any of the the style questions you should be responding with a an outline and a script that hits the major elements that makes style that's kind of fluffy and cloudy and esoteric more structured process oriented framework oriented detail oriented all right sam what's up sam Tell me about a time when you disliked your job and why do you want this job? All right, those are two questions. Why did you dislike your job? Okay, now, what I would generally say, again, this is a negative question, and when you get a negative question, you want to insert a positive that's missing. So you always answer in the omission, meaning... Um, I would have loved it if I love helping customers and I would have loved if I would have had more direct contact with the customer. My job uh, is in helping the customer service team was to make sure that all the customer service agents are equipped with. And I would love it if I had the opportunity to also have some direct client and inter customer interaction so I could do my job even better with more real life practical examples of what the customer service agents are going through. Right, something like that. I answered with the omission, meaning I did not give them something specific that I do not like doing. Meaning, well, Andy has me, um, you know, filling in the spreadsheet with the little this, that, and the other thing. No, don't say anything about your job. Who is tracking on this one? Are you picking up what I'm laying down here? You answer a negative with an omission of something you want, not something you don't. So because I have an absence of something, I disliked it. That's the right. That's my implication, right? Give me the pink wavy hand things if you're uh, if 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 you're following me on that. Okay, so Sam, that's a great one. And why do you want this job? 
I want this job because I'm looking for a company who. I just gave you this whole script, right? Like, what are you looking for in your next role? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna adjust it slightly. I want, I want this job because what drew me to you is you as an organization, because I know, because I'm internally self-aware, that I'm looking for an organization who boom, 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 boom. So I'm interested in the company first and foremost. When it comes to this particular job, this particular job is going to allow me an opportunity to add value using my experience with skills in. Boom, boom. It's in my wheelhouse. I love doing this. I roll out of bed and do jumping, you know, backflips every day because I want to come to a job that looks like this kind of thing. So that's how you would approach, that's how you would approach that one. I love you guys. You guys are you guys are on your game today. I love it. Job pirate. How to deal with an interviewer who insists on going through your CV chronologically and keeps asking about things less relevant to the role. I love this. Do you know what? Why did you do Y after X? Everything. Now, now, because I don't actually have your resume and I don't know the specifics of what you're saying, if somebody made me go through and said, let me just take me, because I know me, right? Andy, in 1988, and you started working, and in 1989, and you were doing this, and in 1990, when you were doing that, well, you know, as a, as a, as a consultant, when I was developing software at that time, what that really was helping me do was understand business functions and blah, 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 and understanding communication, um, basically understanding how to grow my communication skills and learning how I needed to express my blah, 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 because that enabled me to. I would be talking about what it did in the context of what I'm going for, because anybody, just this is like a no joke response here, anybody who's asking you questions about stuff that's irrelevant is, is one of the greatest signs of a terrible interviewer because what is the interviewer's job? To gather information to what? Make a determination of whether you're going to be a what? A good long-term employee, right? It's not even can I hire you, right? Like it's not even can I get you onto the team. It's are you going to get here and stay? So what information is going to do that? I'm I'm, as a job candidate, I know you think this is going to sound silly. It is my job as a job candidate to cover up all you as an interviewer's weaknesses. I need to give you what you actually need to know so you can make a good decision about hiring me. And so everything that I would say would be said in the context of why it matters today. Okay? Even though that was 35 years ago or whenever it was. So that's the way I look at that job pirate. That's a great one. That's a great one too. Mohit, how do you motivate your team? Mohit, I got news for you, brother. You, as a member of my leadership coaching group, guess what the topic is on June 23rd? Motivating others. Guess what the topic is in July? Diversity. So, so check out the leadership coaching. Uh, so, all right, wait. How do you motivate others? Well, first thing is you need to understand what drives people. So people are motivated for their own self-interests. We all are. You, me, it doesn't matter. We want to understand the context of how we are going to be affected by whatever happens, right? That's, that's it. That's, it's like, let's just get that out. So you have to, number one, you have to understand what motivates them. Number two, you got to respect them so much that you will, are willing to take the time to communicate to someone, anyone, why this matters to them, how they fit into this. So if you're talking about in the context of motivating your team, you want to make sure that your team is motivated because they understand the common goal. They know where they fit in and why what they're doing is important. Don't assume they know that. Because I might say to somebody, if you get that little thing wrong and that design is wrong and then that guy takes it and then she puts it in and then he tests it, and then she basically integrates it with this. If you get that wrong, everything fails, right? Kind of thing. Now that's a, a bit dramatic, but like going through the process of, and, and explaining all that. And then once you get them in motion, motivation requires 
constant attention and nurturing. It does, okay? On whatever frequency that is required, that could be hourly, it could be daily, could be weekly or monthly, okay? So there's a level of communication, feedback, and so on to make sure that people understand they're on the right track. And when you are doing that, making sure that you are encouraging them based on the progress. And a lot of times, it, people who are not motivated, when you get to the feedback stage, whatever period of frequency that is, one of the things, especially people who want to accomplish great things and who want to do a great job are usually hard on themselves and don't recognize how much progress they're making or how far they've come. And a big part of motivating people is to make sure they're reflecting on that and you are pointing that out for them. And then you are giving them what the next step is and the next step is and how they can effectively get there. Then what it is, is then there's a level of appreciation, right? You want to make sure that you're acknowledging and so on. And I could keep going on a few more of these, but Mohit, you get the idea. You are basically taking, a, again, a structured, uh, a structured outline and hitting the key stages of what, what motivates somebody. So any of you that are going into job interviews, when you get any of these, how do you motivate the team? How do you lead the team? What's your communication style? What's your management style? All that, you have to have the outline. You know I talk outlines all the time. If you are watching, if you've watched any of my interview coaching, right? The second step in any response is to give them the outline. And you can also say, if you want to give them the outline up front, well, I think when you motivate a team, there's five things you need to do. Boom, 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 boom. Give them the outline and then go through each one. You could do that as well. I love that. I love that technique. All right. Christine Gunn, moving from a leadership role to an independent contrib individual contributor role, what changes do you think you will need to make? What will you miss? Uh, okay. I won't miss anything. Omission. The changes I think I need to make are now. Okay, I'm going to make an assumption here so I could give you what I think is the most probable response. If you're going from a leadership role to an individual contributor role, you're going on the same plane, likely. Okay, most of the time. I used to manage the sales team. Now I'm going to be a seller. I used to manage the marketing team. Now I'm going to be the head of social media and campaigns and blah, 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 whatever it is, right? You're still in the same trajectory, okay? Because if you're really changing functions, then this question doesn't apply. So, so they're not going to be asking it. So they're probably going to say, well, what changes do you think you'll need to make? I, I don't think I, I'll need to make it. I'm, I'm going to focus on the aspect of doing it. If, if you know, what will I miss? Uh, actually, I, I won't miss anything. I'm getting back to what I love the most. So while it was enjoyable to manage the sales team, uh, that required a lot of administration and other and, and organizational aspects of that role that detracted me, omission, detracted me from doing what I love most. That's the omission you go back to working with customers and solving their business problems, I'm look, I'm not, in this case, I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I'm getting back to what I love the most. You can, it, that is perfectly okay to, to focus the response that way. You, again, you need, in this case, they need information to know if you're going to be a good fit. Part of this question is designed to determine, will you be happy with the position you're taking? We think you will be great at it, but we want to make sure from an attitude, attitudinal perspective that you're not going to bug out on us. So in, in this case, what you need to, is reassure them that this is what you want, not you're okay with going back to it. I absolutely missed it, love it, and desire to get back. Right, this is my dream is to get back to the individual contributor. Just say this, you're interviewing, right? What sells you best? So you want to go back to I'm not missing anything. I'm getting back to what I wanted more of kind of thing. Whatever that will whatever that will be. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. David Crane, how many people have you managed? The interviewer is looking for 100 plus direct reports. I'm assuming you're asking me this question because you have a gap. If you have managed 100 people, then you say I've managed 100 or 500 or 1,000, right? That's a non-issue. You just give them an answer. That's actually a rather poorly designed question on the interviewer's part because it's a singular, it's a singular answered response. Never want to ask questions that are yes, no, or numerical, right? As an interviewer, right? That's just choppy. It doesn't tell me anything. Now, 
The other thing is, if I'm looking at your resume, I should be able to ascertain that information. Let's say I didn't read your resume or you didn't clearly articulate how many people you manage. You talk about, well, I have managed X number, give them the biggest number, which included X 38 direct reports, 58 partnerships, 37 subcontractors, or whatever the number is. And, and then you give them, the, give them the answer, and then you could do one of two things. You can give them the answer and pause and wait for them to follow up with, have you ever had 100 direct reports? Which is a stupid follow-up on their part because you didn't say you did, right? You gave them, you gave them your max. Now, the other thing you can do is wait for them to say, well, do you, they might say, do you feel that you would have X, uh, you know, do you feel you would be able to handle? Now, I got news for you, David Crane. Nobody ever has 100 direct reports. Nobody has 100 people that directly line to them. They might have a pyramid of 100 people or 1,000 or 10,000, but anybody who has an act actually has 100 direct reports wouldn't be able to do anything but babysit 100 people because they'd be calling them all day to need, to need stuff. So the way that I look at that is you want to talk about how many people you've managed or how many people have been in your, your little fiefdom. You can talk about more about the impact that what you have done has. So the units that I have have... Yes, have had 58. I had 58 direct reports, and we were responsible for 78 systems, 78 million dollars in whatever. Or you can talk in terms of magnitude. So I understand, you know, and 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 if you if you've done your investigation up front, or if this is a recruiter who's asking you this, then you ask the recruiter back. Okay, in in the number of direct reports. How much revenue does that group generate? What's the budget for that group? How many products does that group support? Whatever is the appropriate line of questioning so that you can neutralize it from an impact standpoint. Just so you know, somebody who, who has a 50-person team can manage a 500-person team, no problem. So, uh, so any employer that gets overly hung up on that is probably not the employer for you. But that's how I would approach that question. J.A., how do you answer, tell us of a time you were asked to do something unethical? Now, you could, you could do one of a couple things. If someone asked me this question, I would say, I've never been asked to do anything unethical. What's your next question? I would say that. That's exactly how I would respond to that. Because there is no law that you have ever had to have been asked something unethical. OK, so let that's how I would respond to that. Literally hard stop. OK, but let's not cheat you out of out of some value here. If somebody asked me, let me vary the question here. Andy, is there anything you wouldn't do? Or what if you were faced with something unethical? If I was faced with something unethical, I would voice my opinion to whoever was making the request. Then it would be a matter of what the outcome of that would be. Well, what if they pressed you and said you needed to do it? I would say I probably would just go to HR. Okay? I mean, like, this is a stupid line of questioning. All right. Or, Andy, is there anything you wouldn't do on this job? Yes, I wouldn't do anything unethical or illegal. Right? Kind of thing. I'd go that route. Just remember something in this in this line of questioning. Number one, it's rare, and number two, you can these are shut. You can shut these down very quickly. All right, and don't think for one second. Don't think for one second that you shutting this down is going to hurt you because this line of question. This is not going to be a dominant part of the interview if they're asking you about things like this. But that is a that is a great question. I just I would not I would not give it. I would not give it a lot of, of thought or I would not give it a, an extended answer. RC, briefly describe your educational and professional experience. Should I follow the tell me about yourself? This is the first opening question for a school district management position. RC, I would, when you say, should I follow the format, tell me about yourself. I want to clarify something for all y'all. Many years ago, Many years ago, like let's say, I don't know, 2016 or maybe 2017 or something like that, 
I put a video out there and tell me about yourself. And that was something like six, seven years ago. And I have substantially revamped how I would do the tell me about yourself process. I have a video on my YouTube channel about how to introduce yourself in a job interview. It's the same way I would lead off with the tell me about yourself. So let me talk about it this way. For those of you that have not seen the tell me about yourself, the kind of Andy's latest and greatest, or how to introduce yourself in a job interview, I want to, I want to, before I give you the answer, I want you to understand why you want to introduce yourself the way I want you to introduce yourself. Every single time that you add a layer to yourself, I'll be specific and I'll describe my, my terms here. When you add a layer for yourself, each layer, you know, you like when you tell people stuff and you kind of peel the back, the layers of the onion or whatever analogy you want to use. When you are introducing yourself, you want to pile on layer after layer because the more layers that you give them, the more unique you become. And let me let me give you an example of what I mean by layer after layer to make me more and more unique, which is what you want. I'm a career coach. My name's Andy. I'm a career coach. Yes, Andy. There are only like eight bajillion career coaches on the internets. That's right. That's not very unique. And I have online training and coaching services. And so too do seven bajillion of them. Okay, that's true too, right? I help people internationally. That shrinks the pool. I've helped people in 200, almost 200 countries. That shrinks the pool more. I use experience as an executive recruiter that I was for 15 years. That shrinks the pool. And I was a corporate practitioner and a business leader for nearly 20 years. Shrinks the pool more right? I've written three books, shrinks the pool more. I'm your five tool player, meaning I deliver it to you in every medium, right? It's video, audio, speeches, blogs, boom, books, boom, boom, boom. All right. Shrinks the pool more. Every time, then it start, then you start getting into the, to the individuality of the person. Andy's the one who takes the longest time because he gives me all the goods. He gives me the psychology, the reason why, all the mistakes I'm going to make, how to do it, blah, blah, blah. Then it gets to be tactical. Okay, do you see how many layers I'm able to add that makes me one of one? Okay, you do the same thing when you're going to introduce yourself. So, my name is R.C. I have been a, I don't know, I don't know what your district position is. I have been a principal for 20 years. Before that, I was an assistant principal. And before that, I was a teacher. I taught all grades, K through eight or whatever, right? Shrink, shrink, shrink. Okay. And I've done it in urban areas and I've done it in rural areas and I've done it, boom. And I wrote the protocols and the methodology when it comes to this, that, and the other thing, boom, right? My methodology is used district-wide by, right? Like, Every time you add layers like that, you make yourself more unique. So any tell me about yourself is going to open with a 30 second to let's say 45 to 60 seconds, depending on how, how you want to drag it on. I, you know, I have my whatever and this and that and my educational degree from and I speak three languages and so on and so forth. So where you want to go, uh, RC, is how to introduce yourself in a job interview. That's what that's the video that I would watch. I hope that helps you. That's a really good one. J.O., have you ever been terminated for a position? No. Or, right, if not, yes, if yes. Yes, there was this time I was terminated. It turned out to be the best thing that could ever happen to me. Why? Because I learned so much. Why? I recognized, and then you talk about it in the affirmative, right? It, life happens for you, not to you, right? It turned out this was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I learned so much and this and that and the other thing, and I'm so happy it, hap had, you know, it had to happen, right? That's the way I would go. As a total side, I want y'all to recognize something right now. I know a lot of you are going through your job searches, or maybe you just stop by because you like my jovial, uh, you know, personality and colorful polo t-shirts. Uh, you, when you think about your life, whatever you're going through right now, I mean this, I'm staring you right in the baby blues. 
at some point you will look back and know it had to happen that way, right? You will know exactly why it had to happen that way. You might not know it now while you're going through the mud, but someday you're going to look back and you're going to know. I promise you. All right. What do we got next? Uh, Mrs. Lunatic. Come on. What's up with that? You ain't a lunatic. Have you ever been... Sorry. Have you ever been given a choice of termination or involuntary quit? Or vo or in or in wait, have you been given a choice of termination or to voluntarily quit? Is what I think you mean? And here again, I would go the same route. Um so like here's one. I mean, like, I worked for a company that every six months during the meltdown of 2001 and two uh the, every six months they would go through a round of hey does anybody want to leave the company so we don't have to fire some other person kind of thing you could say yeah voluntarily quit and they paid me and i took a trip to europe or what like i mean i you know hey the market was melting and or my company was was you know, divesting. My company was chopping off an arm of its whatever and outsourcing it and everybody that was an employee had to get let go kind of thing. So whatever the situation may be there. Job Pirate, how would you deal with criticism, negative feedback? So this question is very, um, it's a very ineffective interview question because your response to this is going to be, I love feedback. It is, it is a way to understand opportunities for me to improve. And let me give you a bonus one, Mr. Interviewer. Every piece of feedback is valuable to me. It makes no difference whether I agree with it or not because the important thing about feedback is you look for the truth in it and you look for why somebody feels the way they feel. So I've gotten feedback of all kinds. Sometimes it was my boss who was helping me understand a better technique and how to do stuff, and that was a gem. And other times it was people who, who misconstrued my intentions. But the fact that they gave me feedback and they were thinking something that wasn't true was such a gift to me because now it helped me understand how they might misconstrue my intentions. So I became a better communicator because of that. Right, like you just, I would just run off at the mouth on this stuff. Like, and I would just have all my most perfectly packaged up responses for everything that they asked me like this. So this is a great, that's a great one, Job Pirate. I mean, this is not a great question for the interviewer, but I know, I know you all have no, every time I say that, you could laugh at me because I know you don't have any control over the questions you get asked, but we so got control over the way we respond. John Kelly Planning to move closer to home in an, in another state at the end of the year. How do I answer questions about wanting to have a longer transition than two weeks? PM in construction, finishing projects. Okay, so so okay. Number one, let me give you that because it's I'm mean, gonna feel better because I must say it. You don't need longer than two weeks. I understand everybody thinks we're really important, but trust me when I tell you that for most of you, most of you. Give the appropriate notice, whether that's two weeks or four weeks or three months or whatever your employment agreement says or whatever is customary for your location in the world, right? Everybody's a little different in what's required. Uh, if you are moving to another state, that portion allows you to say, okay, I... The move is a big deal. I need to get my ducks in a row. You might be moving a family. You might have kids changing school. I don't know. My dogs might need a new doggy daycare or whatever. But just, you know, just say, I I, I need to make sure that I I, I want to leave. My, my, my employer's been great to me. I want to leave with some class. I just want to make sure I give them the appropriate amount of time. I want to make sure I'm working the right transition with you. I, I wouldn't, this is pretty normal and natural. But don't, don't, any of you don't think that the world is going to stop turning because you leave a company. They survived without you before you got there. They'll survive without you after you leave. Nanette? Nanette, what's up, my new boot camper? How you doing and my Instagram friend? What brands do you think are succeeding in the industry and why? Question from interviewer. I've gotten this question twice, and it seems like people want to know competitor knowledge 
or my thinking on the brands that I think are making an impact? How do you best prepare for these types of questions that would help me stand out? Okay, wait, fantastic question. But wait, let's not overthink this one. I mean this. Like, I would ask you that question in an interview. Like, I would say, what other career coaches do you follow? And, you know, what what do you think is great about them? What do you think they could do to improve or whatever? I Like, to me, that's number one. Are you actually knowledgeable about the industry? Number two, how, how do you assess performance? Right? What do you think is important? Right? If you say, well, you know, I think this brand is really good because their logo is really cool. That's not going to fly. You know what, Andy? I have been watching you and I want to come and work with you because I think you have the best and most thoughtful teaching. I think you're the most dedicated, the most passionate. You show up every Thursday. It's so on and so forth. But I, I, I'm i watching so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And some of the things that I think that are they're doing really well that we might want to consider are like, that's how I would, because now you're bringing ideas. It doesn't matter where you drew those from, but I would expect you, I I cannot stand, I, I have acid test questions where the interview is over in, in two minutes. When I say, what do you know about me? What do you know about us? Right? I, like, interview's over. I don't care who you are. If you haven't taken the time to be able to respond to that question thoughtfully and run off for five minutes that you should have done your homework, that shows me you don't care at all. So, Nanette, in your case, I, I, would, I would be, wait, it doesn't matter. If you, it, it, wait, if you're in the industry, you should know it. If you're not in the industry and you're moving into the industry, you should show how much research you've done and how you're analyzing uh, these, these organizations and these competitors or just the players in the, in the space. Not, wait, not just the competitors, but the partners, the partnerships, the partnership opportunities. And those kind of things too. So I lo- I love that. I love that. It's it's. But I I don't think it's, I don't think there's anything, underhanded about it. I think it's, I think it's a legit question. Marco, I was asked a number, I was asked the number of copiers in the U.S. if a new product, actual numbers, and kept interrupting me while trying to answer. Pretty sure he was stress testing me. Any advice for those situations? Um, when you say I was asked the number of copiers in the U.S. if a new if a new product, I'm not really sure what you're saying. Is this one of those ridiculous questions like Marco? How many copiers do you think exist in the United States? Uh, then it's a matter of your thought process. Well, there's X number of companies with X number of people and X number of copiers related to X number of people, so that would make it seventeen thousand copiers. Or, hey, does anybody copy anything anymore, right? Isn't everything digital? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what they were actually asking. And then if he kept interrupting, he could just be a bad interviewer or they might have just wanted to see how you, ans- how you handle stress. In any of those cases, it makes no difference what their intention is. If somebody continues to interrupt me, I'll just stop and I'll just stop. And then, then I'll let them... And then, then if, if they interrupt me, then... In order for me to start again, they need to ask me a question or give me a request, meaning, what do you think about that? Or, okay, can you continue? And then that's it. And I just keep smiling. And then I don't work there. Uh, Mahi Hendra, how to answer a technical question during the interview if you don't know the answer? Okay, any technical question, I'm now... A technical question could be, hey, you got this, that, and the other thing. What's the answer? There could be that. And then you're going to try to compute it, and you're going to give them an answer. If it's, hey, we've got this problem. How would you go about solving it, and what would you do? Then what you want to do is you want to take them through your thought process, meaning, okay, so you know, there's five things we need to do, boom, 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 and here's what I would do first, second, third, and fourth, and just walk them through your thought process. If it's a situation where they're asking you how you would do something with a particular language, software, product, function, or whatever, something like that that you haven't used before, number one, I would question their question because 
on your resume, it probably doesn't say that you've ever had that experience, so they shouldn't be asking you that. And then I would immediately say, well, as you can see from my resume, I don't, I've, I've yet to use that product or I've yet to, to do that service or that solution or whatever. But if I had to kind of think it out, I would say, bump, 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 bump. Based on my experience, or based on my experience using these other products or these other functions, or 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 what I understand about that particular process, here's how I would go about doing that and work them through your thought process. That's how I would do that. Hand time check here, Kara. Do me a favor. Um, can you give me a give me a? I have a, an interview. Somebody's interviewing me right after this, so I. I have a hard stop here in in a wee bit, but I but we're rolling, and I want to keep trying to get a few a few more of these in. All right, let's see. Tanya S. I just had someone on the phone tell me why other applicants haven't been interested in the position. That was new. That's awesome. As a matter of fact, you should be asking that. Why hasn't the position been filled? Have you made any offers? If if so, why were they rejected? What was the person? Right? Why did the person walk away? Why like all that stuff are questions you should be asking in your in your interview. I love it. John Pirate, on that work-life balance point, can you tell them that in an interview as answer to why us? Um, I would not ever this is this is me. Hold on, let me back up. Work-life balance. It's y'all can have whatever you want that's part of your requirements and what fits for you, right? Maybe maybe just you value family time. I love that, right? That we all should. And maybe you are maybe you are maybe your husband or your wife or your partner travels a lot. You got kids, you got four dogs like Andy does or whatever. For whatever reason, it makes no difference and you need that. Despite that, okay, so I want you to have it. But I would not be bringing that up or using work-life balance terms in any interview, whether you're responding, saying that, that oh, I, I love the fact that everybody advertises that you have a work-life balance pop, you know, approach. I would just never say any of that stuff. I just wouldn't. So that's, that's me. Ian N49. Our minds are blown. Ethical questions answer perfect. I wait. I like. I I don't get like some employers asking these questions is like ridiculous. RC, you're welcome. Oh wait, we got a whole bunch of hearts here. Caitlin West, thank you so much. This session has been so helpful. I love it. Ramon, amen. GBC, which I know is Gisela. It had to happen exactly that way. So right, Gisela. I got something for you. I hope you're still here, y'all, folks. So this is for Gisela personally for Gisela, and you all get to benefit because Gisela is a boot camper. And in our last boot camp session, she was asking me a question about approaching, an, she's got in an interview, she's got an interview, or hopefully it went well, or it may be still going, where she was asking me, I'm going through an interview and the company just wanted to interview me because they really love my background and they, they want to try to figure out where I fit. And then after Gisela asked that of me, and I gave her my response. Uh, three other people that I was co- that I've been coaching since last week have all asked me the same thing. So that means when I when I get hey, you don't have to hit Andy over the head five times. Uh, that's the topic for next Thursday. Is how do you interview when the position isn't baked? It's not scoped yet. It's either hey, we love you, come in and talk to us. Hey, uh, we don't have a job description. Hey, maybe it's an informational interview or whatever. I'm going to give you the formula for how I would go about approaching that to ensure you get the job and you get to, you get to spec out your own job. So that's, so, so Gisela, we're bringing more of that, uh, next Thursday and Monique, thank you for the words of encouragement, Andy. I needed to hear that. You're welcome. Tanya S. This is great. Well, I hope, I hope every live office hours is great. 